If you wanna work at a crypto startup, the answer is Solidity. If you wanna work at a high frequency trading firm, the answer is C++. And if you wanna know the best programming language to learn in 2022, then there's only one thing I need you to promise me that you'll stop thinking about programming languages in terms of job opportunities. The market is constantly changing. What's hot today might not be in demand tomorrow. So you wanna focus on learning and growing. So you'll be able to pick up any new technology, framework or paradigm. And the languages in this video will help you do just that. The last thing to remember, what matters most is doing, not which programming language you're using. So if you're currently learning a language not mentioned in this video, that's okay, keep going, and then come back and pick up one of the languages I recommend. Thanks to HubSpot for making this video possible. Today, there are three things I'll be using to decide the best programming language. Ease of use, documentation and community, and real world application. And though not formally a criteria, I'll also make sure that the best programming language allows for all the theoretical principles like object-oriented programming, abstraction, and functional methods. Remember, theory is great, but it's even better in practice. I want you to be able to get started quickly. So if you can't go from installing the language to executing Hello World in five minutes or less, or if the syntax is super confusing, then the language isn't easy to use. And when you start out, Stack Overflow is your best friend. But if it takes you hours instead of seconds to get answers to your questions, that might mean the community or documentation aren't that strong. Lastly, we learn languages to use them at hackathons and in interviews or for our own personal projects. So if you're learning Cobalt because it feels nostalgic, but you'll never actually use it to build anything real, you might wanna reconsider. And the answer to the age old question, the verdict on the best programming language to learn this year will be the same in 2023 and 2024 and maybe even 2025. My advice today is evergreen. Let's get into it. If you're here just for the answer, I recommend either JavaScript or Python. And I know I said best programming language, singular, but I ran both these languages against the criteria above and they were tied. Let me explain. While JavaScript has a robust community and lots of real world applications, it's not the easiest to use. And while Python is super easy to use and has great documentation, it's not used for as many real world projects. So what's the final answer? What's my recommendation if there was a gun pointed to my head and I was forced to pick just one? Well, I'll tell you and we'll break the tie together. But either way, I'm gonna give you plenty of free resources for either language. So no matter which you pick, you'll be in good hands. Let's battle it out, starting with ease of use. I like to think of ease of use in two ways. How easy is it to get started and how easy is it to keep going? So think of the first criteria as literally how many seconds until I can see hello world in either the terminal or the browser. And the second criteria measures how intuitive the syntax is and if the language behaves as you'd expect. Is it easy to get started? It's incredibly easy to get started with JavaScript. To write JavaScript code locally, you open up your favorite editor, you type in some code, you save the file with the .js extension, which stands for JavaScript, of course, and you're done. Pretty easy, right? And to run your code in the terminal, to see output, you just have to download node.js, which is an open source server environment. And you don't have to understand what that means. Just think of it as a way to run your JavaScript code. So you install node, you go to your terminal, you type node followed by the name of your file, hit enter and you'll see your code run. Concretely, we've gone from nothing to seeing hello world in the terminal in like less than five minutes. In fact, the slowest step in the entire process was probably downloading Node, which depended on your internet speed. Another way to see your JavaScript code is in the browser. So as you might know, HTML is the way we write web pages. So if you inject JavaScript code anywhere within script tags in an HTML file, and then open that file in any browser, you'll see your JavaScript code run. Pretty cool, right? So far, so good. It's also ridiculously easy to get started with Python. In fact, most laptops today come with Python pre-installed. So all you have to do is open up your favorite IDE, type in some code like print hello world, save the file with the .py extension, and then you can see it almost instantly by going to the terminal, typing in either Python or Python 3, followed by the name of the file and hitting enter. It's a little more complicated to see Python in the browser because you're gonna need some framework like Django or Flask, but we'll cover those later. And 99% of the time when you're working with Python, it's locally with the terminal or you're doing backend development. So you don't really care about the front end anyway. Is it easy to keep going? Well, both Python and JavaScript are untyped. So you know how in Java, before you type any variable, you have to write like string or integer, or when you're writing a function, you have to explicitly include the return type like void or again, integer or string. Well, in Python and JavaScript, you don't, it's inferred. So if you just typed 
x equals five, the languages go, okay, cool, well then x must be a number. Well, type languages are better because they're more readable, they're less error prone, and there's a variety of other reasons. But since both languages aren't typed, I guess neither has the advantage. Though I will say for Python, you have MyPy, which is like a linter that kind of enforces typing. And for JavaScript, you can use TypeScript, which is like JavaScript with typing. So again, there are alternatives to get that typing in there, but something to note. Now, leaving typing aside, JavaScript can be insanely confusing. And by that, I mean, it doesn't always behave the way you'd expect. Like, let me give you a few examples. For example, one exclamation mark is different than two exclamation marks, or as people like to call them, bang or bang, bang. And then there's the whole truthiness and how it relates to null or not a number nan or undefined. And the fact that there are three different things to represent similar things always confuses me. I always have to look up on Stack Overflow which one does what. And then there's all the messiness when you try to add or subtract different types of things and it does weird things. And as you get more advanced, one of the core concepts of JavaScript is the idea of callbacks and promises. And that's also really hard to get your head around. In fact, I've written JavaScript code for a while now and I still have to look those things up. So though it's really easy to get started with JavaScript, it's also pretty easy to get stuck. And before you know it, you're in uncharted territory. But for Python, it's really easy to keep going. The syntax is super intuitive, it reads like English, and there's no funky behavior. Operations just do what they're supposed to. It's also really easy to instantiate lists and maps and sets. And you get a lot of stuff for free, like iterators, which are really powerful. Honestly, even as you get more advanced in your Python journey and become more and more proficient, I feel like the language is the same. You just know how to use it better. And that's amazing. So with all that in mind, I think Python takes this category. Barely, but it still takes it. So one zero to Python. Since Python has the advantage for now, let me tell you about some amazing free resources you can use to learn the language. Our friends at HubSpot have published an entire introduction to Python ebook completely for free. And they'll email you the guide. I browsed through some of the topics and honestly, they're amazing. The ebook does a great job starting from the absolute basics to slowly ramping up to some of the more advanced topics. Even I learned something new. You can download the ebook with my link in the description. And again, it's 100% free. Now let's talk about documentation and community. Both languages are mature, which means that their documentation and communities are extremely strong. Finding answers is simple. Just go to python.org or the Mozilla website or Stack Overflow. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Python and JavaScript were some of the most frequently searched keywords on Google. And there are so many free blogs and tutorials and videos all over the internet. So getting unstuck is pretty easy. I know I mentioned that JavaScript can be confusing, but the amazing community makes up for it. I remember when I was in promise callback hell, I was able to figure it out thanks to the gods at Stack Overflow. As for community, the answer is very similar. Since both languages have been around for a while and are prevalent in everything from web apps to game development to data science, there are so many open source libraries, frameworks, and tooling. Every week or so, I see some new framework popping up for JavaScript or Python, and the fact that there's continuous innovation is a very promising sign. And I know I mentioned don't care about programming languages in terms of jobs or companies, but the fact that there are companies out there actively developing in these languages and open sourcing their contributions is great. For example, Dropbox is famous for developing in Python and they open sourced MyPy, which is like a type checker. Fun fact, the original author of Python actually worked at Dropbox. And then for JavaScript, you have companies like Airbnb and Palantir, which respectively open sourced a testing framework called Enzyme and then the TS Lint guide. The fact that the industry cares about these languages means that they aren't going anywhere. So I'll have to say it's a tie again. Both languages have a diehard community. We're gonna have to get the top fans, throw them in a ring and have them fight it out. Last but not least, we come to real world applications. We wanna know if people use these languages to build in the real world and that they pick these languages over all the other options out there. Building depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Scripting, web development, game development, desktop apps, whatever. And once again, both these languages are super strong. Python is really strong when it comes to scripting and data science. In a few hours, you can have a bot trading stocks for you. You can easily read in command line input and you can even scrape websites. And for data science, Python is king. I mean, you can basically do cutting edge computer vision with OpenCV and there's nothing better than NumPy and Pandas and developing in Jupyter Notebooks. Even today, many machine learning models are deployed through Python. And remember when I told you I care that these languages allow you to practice theory? Well, it's unbelievably simple to write classes and think of object-oriented programming in Python. And with maps, filters, and iterators, you can also write functionally. The last thing I'll say is Python is extremely concise. In fact, it's famous for it. The same program in Java that would take 100 lines might only need three or four in Python. 
So no matter what, I'd highly encourage you to pick Python for your coding interviews. JavaScript is strong for literally everything. It's the go-to for web apps because of how easy it is to write front-end and back-end code, which essentially means you can create full-stack applications. And that's because of the amount of open source frameworks out there. In the front end, you have React, Angular, Vue, or anything else ending with JS. And for the back end, you have Express or any other framework around Node. And forget about Objective-C and Swift. With JavaScript and the Electron framework, you can create cross-compatible desktop apps, which is insane. As for information passing, I'm sure you've heard of JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. So yep, once again, invented with JavaScript. Other than data science, JavaScript matches Python scripting abilities. In fact, one of the most popular website scraping libraries, Cheerio, is written in jQuery, which is another god-tier JavaScript library. And you know what? JavaScript isn't that verbose either, so you can use it in coding interviews. Even though Python was my first true love, I think this one goes to JavaScript. Since JavaScript has made a strong comeback and tied the score, let me tell you about some free resources you can use to learn the language. HubSpot Academy is a completely free portal where you can learn everything from sales to marketing to web applications. You simply make an account and instantly get access to hundreds of free lessons, eBooks, and courses. For JavaScript, I'd highly encourage you to check out the Building Your First Web App course. It uses the newest technologies like Express, Node, and Heroku. I've watched a couple of the lessons and they're really well articulated. Again, link in the description, and I highly recommend you check out this amazing free resource. All right, we have a tie, as I told you in the beginning. Python won in ease of use, but JavaScript is just out there more in the real world, and they were both tied for documentation and community. However, looking at the sheer number of things you can create with JavaScript, especially when you include TypeScript, I have to give JavaScript the win. And yes, I don't think you should care about job opportunities, but we can make it a tiebreaker consideration. There are a lot of startups out there that use JavaScript for the front end and the back end and then some database like Postgres. So learning JavaScript will also help you in the job market. Learn JavaScript and you'll be in very good shape. But please promise me at some point you'll learn Python. It's just too good a language not to know. It's still my go-to when I wanna get something done quickly. And that's it, we broke the tie. As promised, I have now answered the age old question of the best programming language to learn this year. Though for the next five years, I'm gonna keep shouting JavaScript. It's everywhere and that's the truth. Till next time, cheers.